going to show you how I made the sign that's featured in my little stop motion intro. We've found that with our design grounds, it's best to paint the grooves with a small flat brush. We've tried using spray paint and spray paint doesn't really go down in the grooves. If you like using spray paint, you can spray paint the grooves first with a brush like I'm doing here and then uh, mask off what you don't want to be painted and then use a black spray paint on, on top. Uh, I could have easily done that in this case, but I already had my brushes and my paint out and I'm not really a spray painter, so I'm using brushes to, on this. It works pretty well. When I originally recorded this, I was I was speaking while I was painting and the video just got too long, so I'm doing a voiceover now, so my hands might not match what I'm saying some of the time. Sorry about that. I'm going to use a, I think that's a two inch foam brush to paint the surface. These design grounds are made out of highly refined MDF or HDF material and there's no need for any sanding sealer or primer. Uh, this is how you would receive it from us, unpainted, ready to go. And I'm just using cheap craft paint. This material doesn't soak up paint like other MDF that you've seen. Now I plan on doing kind of a faux wood grain on the top and turned it over to do that part. Starting out with a lighter brown. Now I let everything dry for the most part and I'm going to paint the edge black. I haven't put any sanding sealer or primer on the edges either. second coat of that light brown. And I accidentally put black on there, which kind of turned out to be a good thing. Uh, ended up looking good for my faux finish idea. I had an art teacher in middle school named Mrs. Gast who 
always said a mistake is a chance to be creative. So whenever you make a mistake, just turn it into something new that you hadn't thought to do before. So I let it dry completely and sometimes I use a power hand sander, but in this case, I decided to just use a piece of sandpaper. Um, you want to sand down all the places where you got paint on the surface um, just to make it easier to cover up. I'm not sure what my hands are talking about here. So I sand it down so that when I paint over it, there's not going to be any weird um, texture that doesn't need to be there. Wiping off the dust. Now I'm putting on some masking tape so that I can paint the white. Um, one thing I learned on this one is try not to put the tape in the groove. It's best to just put it up against the end of the painted part and then use your brush to paint across the groove. When the tape goes in the groove, it makes some weird goopy spots as you can see there. I also think it might have been a good idea to prime at least the white part because white paint is hard to get flat and opaque. Um, the other paints you can see went on easy, but the white paint I think I ended up doing three coats. So I took off the tape from uh, the top and the bottom that you saw before and put it across the white when I got the white finished. I made this little acrylic tool to make a faux wood grain on the bottom. So I made a darker brown, painting that on to the dried lighter brown. And while that darker brown is, is still pretty wet, you need to use your graining tool. And you're learning from my mistakes and successes as we do this. That, that I did too much. You have to be more confident and go straight from one side to the other. That didn't work out well. So I got a paper towel and rubbed it off. which actually in the end might have helped the final overall look. Put on some more dark brown. And with each layer, I think it's getting darker and darker. Did it again with fewer strokes. But again, I didn't go, if you can see on the left there, the grain doesn't go all the way from that side. So I was happy with that until I realized that the grain didn't go all the way across. So I ended up redoing the wood grain again and letting it dry and sanding it down. And you'll see the finished product in a second, but here it is. Um, you can put these in the laser, in your laser and lay out where you would like for your letters to go. I put a masking tape on top of it and just scored where my letters needed to be. And what actually ended up happening was when I went to glue them on, I realized it was the wrong size, so I had to cut my letters again. 
but um, there I am pointing at the top and explaining how I um, started to sand it down to bare MDF to start all over again and I quit because I, I liked the, um, the look that it made when I sanded it just a little bit. So that's my final faux wood grain. I'm going to pull off my masking. off the final bits of masking I'm using my little plastic razor every la laser owner should have one of the, these little plastic razors you can find them on Amazon Now all that's left to do is glue them on. I use Elmer's as long as it's an indoor sign. Never had any trouble with Elmer's glue on indoor signs or ornaments for that matter. I like how it dries truly clear and it gives you a little bit of time to make sure you put it in the right spot. about it thank you for watching let us know if you have any questions visit guntercreativewoodworks.com to purchase see you soon